Hey guys, it's me, Miss Norris, and today I have a fun read aloud for you of the story, Did I Ever Tell You How Lucky You Are? Did I Ever Tell You How Lucky You Are was written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss in 1973, and it talks about a lot of ways that we can be lucky. If you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Did I ever tell you how lucky you are? He doesn't seem like he feels very lucky, does he? Nor does this little duckling. Mm, might not be a duck. You can see there's a lot of sad kind of creatures around. Oh, there's another. Hmm. When I was quite young and quite small for my size, I met an old man in the desert of Dries, and he sang me a song I will never forget. At least, well, I haven't forgotten it yet. He sat in a terribly prickly place, but he sang with a sunny sweet smile on his face. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, Ducky, you're really quite lucky. Some people are much more, oh, ever so much more, oh, muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. Luck just depends on who you are. Be glad you don't work on the Bungle Bung Bridge, that they're still building across Boober Bay at Bum Ridge. It's a troublesome world. All the people who are in it are troubled with troubles almost every minute. You ought to be thankful a whole heaping lot for the places and people. You're lucky you're not. So this is lucky not to be working on a bridge that's still being built. Sounds dangerous. Just suppose, for example, you lived in Gazate and got caught in the traffic on Zate Highway 8. Now, I don't like being caught in any kind of traffic, but this looks bonkers. Or suppose, just for instance, you lived in Gazare with your bedroom up here and the bathroom up there. Do you imagine having to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night if you your bedroom was here and you had to go all the way up here to go to the bathroom? Mm, you'd have to plan ahead. Suppose, just suppose, you are poor Herbie Hart who has taken his thrombobulator throm apart. He never will get it together, I'm sure. He never will know if the gick or the gore Fits into the scrux or the snucks or the snore. Yes, Ducky, you're lucky not to be Herbie Hart, who has taken his thumb dibulator apart. Have you ever taken apart something that you thought you could put back together? I have, but never a thump thrum dimbulator. Mm. I'm lucky I don't have to say that every day. Think they work you too hard? Think of poor Ali Sard. He has to mow grass in his uncle's backyard, and it's quick-growing grass, and it grows as he mows it. The faster he mows it, the faster he grows it, and all that his stingy old uncle will pay for his shoving that mower around in that hay is the piffless pay of two duklas a day. And Ali can't live on such piffless pay. So... He has to paint flagpoles on Sundays in grooves. How lucky you are. You don't live in his shoes. So you could either grow, mow fast growing grass that grows fast as he mows it or, and be a flagpole painter where all these flagpoles are so tall and dangerous. And poor Mr. Bix. Every morning at six, poor Mr. Bix has his borfin to fix. It doesn't seem fair, it doesn't seem right, but his borfin seems to go schlump every night. It schlumps in a heap, sadly needing repair. Bix figures it's due to the local night air. 
It takes him all day to unschlump it, and then the night air comes back and schlumps once again. So don't you feel blue? Don't get down in the dumps. You're lucky you don't have a borfin that schlumps. I'm lucky. I don't know what a borf, borfin is, but I'm glad I don't have one that schlumps. And while we're at it, consider the, schl the schlots. The crumple horn, web-footed, green-bearded schlots, whose tail is entailed with unsolvable knots. If he isn't muchly more worse off than you, I'll eat my umbrella. That's just what I'll do. So I've had tangly hair, but I've never had a tail, and especially one that doesn't ever untangle with so many knots. Mm. And you're lucky indeed you don't ride on a camel. To ride on a camel, you sit on a whammel. A whammel, you know, is a sort of saddle held on by a button that's known as a faddle. And boy, if your old whammel faddle gets loose, I'm telling you, Ducky, you're gonna get, you're gone like a goose. So I didn't know that this was called a whammel, but I would not like my whammel to get lost with my faddle getting unbuttoned. Oh, and poor Mr. Potter, tea crosser, I daughter. He has to cross T's and he has to dot I's in an I and T factory out in Van Nuys. Did you know that there's someone who just crosses T's and dots I's? Be a big job, but what if you missed some? Oh, the jobs people work at out west near Hotch Hotch. There's a hotch hotcher bee watcher, his job is to watch, is to keep both his eyes on the lazy town bee. A bee that is watched will work harder, you see. Well, he watched and he watched, and in spite of his watch, that bee didn't work any harder, not much. So then somebody said, our old bee watching man just isn't bee watching as hard as he can. He ought to be watched by another hotch hotcher. The thing that we need is a bee watcher watcher. Well, the bee watcher watcher watched the bee watcher. He didn't watch well, so another hotch hotcher had to come in as a watch watcher watcher. And today all the hotchers who live in hotch hotch are watching the are watching on watch watcher watching watch watch watching the watcher who's watching that bee. You're not a watch watcher. You're lucky, you see. So I really don't, I don't work any faster when people are watching me. And I think that's happening with that bee. But now all of these people are watch watching the watcher. And how fortunate you're not Professor DeBreeze, who has spent the past 32 years, if you please, trying to teach Irish juck. Irish ducks, how to read Javanese. Why would they need to read these other languages, these birds? I don't know. That would be a hard job to do. Oh, and think of the poor puffing Pugglehorn players who have to parade down the Pugglehorn stairs every morning to wake, every morning to wake up the poor, the Prince of Pubakin. It's awful how often their Poogles get broken. Ugh. Oh. That's a big alarm clock, isn't it? And, oh, just suppose you were poor Harry Haddo. Try as he will. He can't make any shadow. He thinks that perhaps something's wrong with his giz. And I think that, by golly, there probably is. No shadow. Everybody else has one. But not Harry. And the Brothers Bazoo, the poor Brothers Bazoo. Suppose your hair grew like theirs happens, happened to do. You think you're unlucky? I'm telling you, Ducky, some people are muchly, oh, ever so muchly, muchly, more, more, more unlucky than you. So could you imagine if your hair off your head was someone else's beard and the, your beard was someone else's hair? That would be tricky. And suppose you lived in the forest in France where the average young person just hasn't a chance 
to escape from the perilous pants-eating plants. But your pants are safe. You're a fortunate guy. And you ought to be shouting, How lucky am I? France. I thought in France you could at least see underpants. And speaking of plants, you should be gl greatly gladdish. You're not Farmer Falkenberg's 17th radish. So the 17th radish just gets smaller and smaller. And you're so, so lucky you're not Gucky Gown, who lives by himself 90 miles out of town in the ruins of Ronk. Ronk is rather run down. And you're so, so, so lucky you're not a left sock left behind by mistake in the caverns of Croc. Lost socks must feel very unlucky. Thank goodness for all the things you are not. Thank goodness you're not something someone forgot and left all alone in some punkerish place like a rusty tin coat hanger hanging in space. Womp womp. <clears throat> That's what I say, Ducky. Don't grumble, don't stew. Some critters are much, much, oh, ever so much, much, so muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you really enjoyed the story. Did I ever tell you how lucky you are? If you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, click that button down at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I have been your cat in the hat, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.